Is that better? <laughs> All right, hopefully you guys can. <laughs> All right, sound working now, guys? Sorry. Cool. Oh, yeah. All right, good deal. Awesome. Cool, cool, cool. Good deal. Always have sound issues, but I think I got it nailed. All right, so do a little roll call, get into things. Um, I was saying before you guys, uh, when you guys couldn't hear me, we have the Gloucester Meteor um, 6S birds in now. So we're going to unbox these and kind of take a look at them and uh, see what's different about them. It's, this is uh, V2 according to the part number, so we're going to go ahead and check these out. And then uh, later on tonight, we're going to get into something brand new that I have sitting in places around me. So, uh, yeah, before we get into it, we'll do a little roll call here. Uh, chat's going pretty fast tonight. All right, so we have, I'm going to scroll back up here. Paul McNeil, Olsen Aviation Crew Chief, Brian Chambers, Ken Sprouse, Eddie K's RC, Tug Hill RC, Michael Roshka, Third Day RC, Race Crew or Race 22 Crew, uh, Dennis Farley, how you doing, buddy? Barry Campbell, Eddie K's RC, Run for the Hills Mining, and let's see who else did I miss here? Jackson's RC Aviation, what's up, buddy? Boone 870, how you doing? Pilot Jerry RC, good to see everybody tonight. Again, on a lovely Sunday evening. Um, I've been looking forward to this all day, and I can't wait to show you guys some stuff later on in the evening. Um, I don't know if any of you guys know what these possibly are or have ever used them during our hobby, but what's new might have something to do with those. little hint there. So, uh... Yeah, let's get into it. Anybody uh, fly this weekend or anything like that? We got to uh, go out and fly some uh, Skunk Works products this weekend. So that was a good time, kind of. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so uh, without further ado, wow, chat's running fast tonight. Awesome. Let's go ahead and get into these. So they now come in uh, two different boxes. I don't know if you guys remember before um, or if you've had one of these before, the, the 4S version. Um, and before I get in too much detail, the Forest version will still be available for a little bit. We do still have some of those, but I do think they are going to convert um, into 6S eventually. Um, I don't know if you'll be able to get the Forest still or not. Uh, but yeah, this used to come in a huge box, and it was kind of not packaged the greatest. And so they have went ahead and changed the packaging. So it now comes in two boxes, and we're going to go ahead and get into it and kind of see what we have real quick. Mostly, I'm just concerned to see the power systems. You guys have, I'm sure, seen the plane before. But we'll go ahead and get into it. <laughs> All righty. could be hard to get out sometimes. Alright. Mike SSI, how you doing buddy? Spencer Keith, what's up? Sorry, I'm trying to watch the chat as I'm unboxing this. Sorry guys. There we go. Get this out of the way here. Try not to hit anything. Nah, <laughs> John Graham. I have no clue. I do not have one. I wish I did, though. Hopefully, we'll see something like that one of these days, John.
Man, they don't want you to get into this one. Sorry, trying to watch the comments, guys. Pilot Jerry RC, I did see that. That was, that was pretty interesting, huh? All right, so in the new packaging, as you can see, it's uh, kind of packaged similar to the uh, Hawker Hunter, which is really nice. All right. Here we have an outer wing panel. I'm going to have boxes to clean up all over the place after this is done. That's a good thing, though. John. <laughs> I don't think he does either. Not that I know. <laughs> Ken Sprouse. Yeah, Ken Sprouse says two boxes. That just means the shipping company will lose one. Yeah. <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> All right, so here we have the beautiful fuselage. And this is a big bird, guys, for those of you have, who have not seen one. It is a very decent sized airplane. Big battery bay in there. So you can fit, I mean, different sized batteries. I'd imagine a uh, five, five to 7,000 would probably fit in here, no problem. The forest bird loved a lot of nose weight, as do a lot of Dynams. Um, so yeah, 6S is going to help definitely with uh, any weight issues up in the nose, putting a bigger pack in there. But plenty of room in there for uh, all kinds of activities. Go ahead, set this off to the side quick. Alright, next one I have a feeling is another outer wing panel. Sea Mafia, what's up buddy, how are you? George Watts, how you doing, buddy? Nice to see you. Jeff's Custom RC, how are you, man? Good to see you guys. Have some good things coming later on in the show after we uh, get done with this. I cannot wait to share with all of you. All right, 44 in here already tonight. Awesome, thanks for joining, guys. I'm super pumped. Hopefully all you guys saw uh, Pilot Ryan's live stream last night. He had RC Girl on there. It was a really good show. I was uh, off in the background listening to it. and uh, But yeah, how cool. She has the Red Cat Gen 8 now. She did some crazy cool modifications to it. Uh, she got the green one, did some really cool stickers on it, and um, did some modifications and stuff to it. It looks absolutely dynamite. And those you can get right here at BitGo Hobby as well. All right. And the tail section. So this is all of it right here. We probably won't get too in-depth as far as building goes tonight because there's some other pretty cool things that we're going to definitely get into. But I just want to show you what all comes in the uh, boxes since they're newly packaged. And I really, really want to see these wings and the upgraded power systems.
These are super hard to get out sometimes. Madam, how you doing, buddy? All right. Ugh. This thing does not want to come out of here. We're just going to get rough with it. Um, hopefully we'll get some uh, videos posted this week, Ten Sprouts. There's been a lot uh, going on in the background lately around here. Super busy weekend as well. Uh, doing quite a few things around here. And we had a huge shipment come in last week. Um, so it was it was very busy trying to keep up around here with uh, We got a little over 500 planes in guys, so that was a big container for us And uh, whoop. And it took some time to reorganize and put those kinds of things away, so Alrighty So here is what's in this box. It is the whole center wing section I see now All right. So you have your decal sheet, which is water slides on this one. Yeah, they're all water slides on this one, which look really good. All right, and then the power systems come pre-installed. So I don't know if you guys can see in there too well or not, but 12 blade 6S fan units, 2200 kV motors, in runners, by the way, and I think it's paired with 80 amp ESCs, if I remember correctly. Uh, they did something a little bit different here. Ah, interesting. Okay. The ESCs also are now uh, tucked inside of the engine nestles here. And there's a balsa plate, it looks like, or a light ply plate that holds in the ESC um, inside the tunnel here to create airflow past it. So that's pretty cool. That's a nice little upgrade. Don't have to worry about the ESCs getting hot anymore or anything like that. Um, all of your spaghetti wiring is right here to feed up through this fuselage EC5 connector, and you are good to go. Oh, wow. I'm pretty excited to fly this. So I'm sure we'll be getting this out this week with a couple other um, things that we will be showing you here shortly. Let's see if I can get this tucked back in here properly. <laughs> yeah, it does, George. So it looks like a Star Wars Land Cruiser. It'd be cool to convert something out of that, huh? All righty. We'll move all this stuff off to the side for a little while because we're going to get into some other stuff here soon. All righty. So with some emojis, who wants to see some new stuff? I don't know if we're ready to break it out or not, or break these things out or not. I'm going to have to see some emojis up in here to get these things out, maybe. I've been waiting to tease you guys with these all day. All right, <laughs> tons of emojis. All right, that's what I'm talking about. All righty. A 
That's quite a few emojis there. Quite a few. <laughs> Air Hammer RC, how you doing, buddy? Dylan, how you doing, man? Good to see you in here. All right, all right. <laughs> Dana's RC said the boxes behind me look like his house. <laughs> all right, so there's tons of emojis. Um, let's see here. So before we get into it, Back to the good stuff. So, sorry, let me get to my other screen here. You guys like that? I had to put you on a different screen before I popped these up. I had them sitting here the whole time. So, this right here is a Dancing Wing Hobbies stick, and we also have the stork. And these are going to be coming to Bitco Hobby, along with uh, other few models as well um, from Dancing Wing. We will have an albatross, and then one that I'm looking at right now, but I can't say because um, it's just not ready to be released yet. So, but it's big, it's beautiful, and uh, it's just, it's really scale and cool looking. But, yeah, the stick is awesome, Third Day RC. This thing's really sweet. Um, we have the stork here. This is 1600 millimeters and it has like um, how the real one, I don't know if you guys are too familiar with the stork, the wings actually folded back. It looked like you could almost hook it up to the back of a truck and trailer it away. Um, and this one actually has that feature. Um, for a 1600 millimeter bird, you can actually, it, it's kind of small, um, so you can fit it in a car easily, especially with the wings folded. Um, now these are going to be... Uh, plug-and-play as is what they call them so they're gonna come with all of the servos electronics motor ESC all of that stuff some of it's gonna be pre-installed some of it is not so um, some building is required on these of course this is uh, not your typical foam plane so so definitely gonna have to do a little bit of building here and there on this one um, kind of consider it right now until we get things kind of nailed in um, it's kind of like a, uh, a bundle um, but with some of the parts already installed for you. Um, so yeah, I do have, I was gonna unbox one of these, but I don't wanna open one because I already built one. So, aha, Pilot Jerry, we are going to. We are going to, buddy. I'm gonna get these out of the way real quick. Yeah, Dennis Farley, uh, plug and play balsa eventually here. So, this right here is the new stick. This thing is absolutely beautiful. Five channel bird, so you do have flaps with it. Um, it's absolutely beautiful though. Absolutely beautiful. Um, they call it a training airplane just for the fact that this thing flies super gentle. Um, but I do want to say if you want to get into some 3D stuff, um, or some crazy aerobatics, this thing can do it too. It's a good plane to uh, work up with as far as skill level goes. Or it's also both of these planes and the ones in the future coming is actually a good segue from foam to balsa if that's something that you wanted um, to do in the future as your skills progress. Um, these are pretty easy to build. It doesn't take a lot of time. This one took me, I want to say, about three, three and a half hours total to build with electronics, getting everything dialed in all my control surfaces adjusted and all that kind of stuff so not too bad um sorry if i'm miss missing any questions guys if there's anything that i miss um or a question that you have for me just put maybe an emoji or something by it and i'll make sure to get to it 
Uh, yeah, air, ha air hammer. These are all balsa. So these run off of a, I have it in here still. Oh, if I can get it out. Oh, I pulled my stuff with it. Um, 4S2200 to a 4S2800, but it has tons of room in here actually. So you could even get a Gen's Ace 3300 in here. I, I have tested it and fitted it. It fits really well. Um, if you want a little bit more nose weight, but CG with this thing is spot on with a 2200. I, I put my 2200 all the way forward and I mean it is spot on. It comes with a 900 kV motor, 60 amp ESC. So there is plenty of power there. Um, I just, I'm really digging this. And it matches the green earth stand like perfect. Uh, so if you get one of these and you want a matching combo, the green earth stand is like awesome for this one. But yeah, CG on this is 90 millimeters back from the leading edge, which is like three and a half inches, I want to say. And with that 2200 in there, I mean, look at that. It's like spot on. I love it. I love it. And it's super light. It's. Oh, it's a dream. I can't, cannot wait. Hey, RC Air Marshall, how you doing, buddy? Good to see you in here. 64 folks tonight. Good to see all of you. All right, so yeah. Fred Barron, how you doing, buddy? Uh, Paul McNeil, yeah, you will be able to buy um, these this week. They, they should be on the website very soon here. Um, I could just not wait any longer to show you guys. It was killing me. So I figured I'd have them on the show tonight, show you guys kind of what was coming and to get excited for. Um, the big one that I'm looking at right now off camera, I cannot wait for you guys to see because it is absolutely gorgeous. There's just a few little things we're working out here and there. Um, and then they will be available very soon and a shipment will be on the way. I just cannot wait. Cannot wait. So. I know you guys want to see the stork really bad or storch. I think it's stork. Uh, so we'll go ahead and put this off to the side and get into those. All right. So. Yeah, race 22 crew sticks fly. Awesome. So. Um, for those of you don't, that don't know, I've been doing this since I was about nine years old, and I come from Balsa Building. So getting back into this stuff is, is taking me kind of back to my roots a little bit, and it's, I, I love it. I, I love it. I, I started building some of these the other night, and it just took me back, and uh, such a good time. But yeah, so getting into it. Whoops. Got control rods coming out of me. So you're going to have a green color here. And then it's going to also come in, if I can get it out. I just popped these open to kind of look at them. So I'm seeing them for the first time with you guys. And then we also have the camo version. It is absolutely beautiful. And then to get in and access all of this, um, there's carbon fiber plate built in here um, to strap your battery down, electronics and all that stuff. But what's really nifty about this to gain access, it's just a magnetic hatch. So, and then, then if you want, you can pull it right out. It has some tabs on it there, but really super simple, easy access. And then it just, oops, if you get your clips back in, just pops right back on there. So yeah, I'm super excited. What one do you guys want to see more, camel or the green one? Because we'll unbox one of them. Whatever one you guys want to see. Nah, I can't yet, Keith Christie. I mean, I, I want you guys to see it so bad, but I just can't yet. Next week's show, stay tuned. Stay tuned. Dave Air Marshall said, let's go green. I have two greens right now, one camo. Camo, green, camo, green, camo, camo. Cam uh oh. Sorry, Marshall. Camo looks like it's winning right now in, the, in camo. Holy smokes. All right. Looks like, looks like we're going camo. There's, there's more camos than greens. <laughs> Ken Sprouse said, whichever you want to send me. <laughs> All right. Camo for the win. So we'll go ahead and get into it. Oops. 
These do not come with it. I accidentally dropped those in there earlier. You do not. <laughs> you don't get Dynam Beaver graphics with it, so don't worry. <laughs> Marshall teasing them. I like it. You know what? I'm going to grab a stand real quick just to put this stuff on. Alrighty. There's the fuse. So it looks like some bits and bops in here, your wheels, screw set. Then this package, so I said earlier, this is kind of like a, a bundle a little bit. And this is going to have your servos and your motor and your ESC in it. All right, let's see what else we got here. That's pretty neat. I like that. Um, Paul McNeil, I'm sorry. Uh, so the Stork is uh, 4S2200. I got the manual right here. It comes with actually really good manuals as well, guys. Um, all very detailed, nice pictures in there as you go along. Uh, tells you what bolts to use where, where to glue, where not to glue. Um, really good directions come with these. Um, but this is, I'm sorry, Paul, uh, well, I'm trying to find the specs on here for you. I could just look at the motor probably. So it's 4S 2200 to 2800, so just like the stick, 900 kV motor, 60 amp ESC. So it's the same power system as the stick. And eventually, I'm sure you guys will see some of these uh, coming with uh, Tomcat motors. So that will probably be in the future as well. see what's in here. This is actually packaged really well. <laughs> it does, Dana's RC. It really does. <laughs> All righty. Lots of foam. So here is the tail portion. So you will have to add your hinges. It comes with hinges and stuff. Um, the stick and the other couple birds do have pre-applied hinges. You will have to glue them, glue them together in some spots. This one looks like it's a little bit more detailed as far as the build goes, just because you have to add the hinges. But yeah, it's actually, it's a pretty plain. And for as small as it looks, I think it's going to be pretty big. Just trying to mock it up a little bit here if we can. I cannot wait. I actually found uh, a video I saw on one of these, and it flew surprisingly, surprisingly well in some windy conditions. So I'm curious to try that out as well. Sorry if I'm missing anything in the chat, guys. I'm kind of oohing and on over here myself looking at this stuff, pulling it out. Uh, what type of battery connector? Good question. I do know the stick is XT60. Uh, this one is XT60 as well. <laughs> Lee Davidson said, what other planes are new? So... Um, the one I can't talk about is new. <laughs> and then uh, we will be getting, um, I, I believe it's a 17 or 1800 millimeter uh, albatross. That's going to be balsa. It's, it's absolutely beautiful. But one thing I like about all these is the attention to detail on some of this stuff. Um, 
it is awesome. Dancing Wing actually makes a really, really well-built balsa airplane. And like, I love all the little scale bits, like the guns and stuff that come with it are just absolutely beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. All right, here's some more. Oh, okay, this looks like parts for the landing gear here. Set that over there. Nice little scale seat for you guys to add a pilot to if you want. All righty. Same as RC. Yeah, the magnet hatch, yeah, it is really cool. Um, so that's how you access it. Carbon fiber um, mounting plate down there to mount your servos and your battery as well. Um, and then also, there's plenty of room in here that you're going to be able to slide your battery forward um, for CG purposes, which is great. But yeah, this is really cool, the magnetic hatch to get in here. It makes it really easy. I was really hoping this wasn't, being balsa, I didn't think it would be a bottom feeder, but I was hoping it wouldn't be. Um, but yeah, it just slides right in there and then clicks right on. It's, it's a pretty cool design. All right, let's get into some more of it. Again, like I said, these do come with everything, guys. Servos, motor, ESC, all of it. So there's, if, if you're looking to get into balsa and you were looking at ARFs or something and you're like, man, I just do not want to do all the guessing on what motor to get, what servos to get, all of that, it's, it's done for you. This will come with everything you need to get it up in the air besides your radio equipment as far as uh, radio and receiver goes and battery. Oops, man, I must have accidentally slid some decals in there. So here are the decals for the store. These are all stickers, it looks like. And what's really cool about these, and I noticed on a couple other um, ones as well, the stickers are flat, and so is the, the, the paint's kind of like a satin, and, and the stickers are like a flat or satin finish, which looks really good. It looks beautiful. So you don't have a shiny sticker, um, real glossy sticker sticking out on a flat surface. It looks, looks really good. All right, and then it looks like it comes with a 12.6 prop. An a AEORC prop. Looks kind of like a APC prop, actually. All right, what else we have here? Uh, Paul McNeil, I will know that later on this week as soon as we get them on the website. Um, we are still just trying to kind of figure that out. These should be... Um, these should be around the same cost, though, as a as your like twelve hundred size or so. Um, excuse me, uh, foam airplanes, I'd imagine. Yeah, me too, Ken Sprouse. He said, I want to see how the wings fold back. Super cool feature. Yeah, me too. We're getting into that right now as soon as I get them out of here. They definitely did a good job packing this. Don Atkins, how you doing, buddy? Good to see you in here. All righty. Hamilton Sanger, how you doing? I just saw you in here, man. How are you? Sorry, I'm missing a bunch of stuff in the chat tonight because I'm kind of oohing and on over this stuff. All right. Oh, I like that. So we have leading edge slats here you can put on there, which that's pretty sweet. And then these look like all your other control surfaces, ailerons and flaps. Set this off to the side. 
This one looks like it will require a few hours worth of building for sure. Airbex RC, how you doing? Pretty good, man. Nice to see you in here. Boogeyman Brown, just got here. What up, Bobby? How are you, man? Nice seeing all you guys in here on a Sunday night. Anybody get out and fly this weekend? We got to for a brief time. All right. Aha. I know what this is. Okay. So this is going to be your motor kick out, actually. So this is going to go in here like that. And then that allows you, oops, this actually slides back more. There it goes until it clicks. And then your cow goes over here. Like that. And what that does is it kicks it out so it allows you to mount your electric motor up front here. Oops. All right, now the wings. That's what we all want to see pretty badly. This is a feature. And when, <laughs> when cutting into boxes with uh, balsa and monocoat slash ultra coat on them, be careful with your pocket knife. I know from previous, previous experience back in the day that you can open a box and make an accent real quick. Ah, Boss223, how you doing, buddy? He said, flew all weekend. That's what's up. I hope all of you guys got a chance to get out and fly this weekend. Whoops, servo cover's popping off on me here. All right. All right, guys. So here are the wings. And they do have the pockets right here for the servo covers. But yeah, so the coolest thing about this. That silver and yellow looks really nice on the bottom. I like that. So the coolest thing about this is on the real ones, these wings actually folded back. It almost looked like you could tow it behind a truck or um, probably just for storage, I'd imagine, to pack them tighter. But uh, the wings would fold back. So this one, when you remove the carbon spar, does the same identical thing for transport. So it's hinged back here. And what happens is when you, after you have it on here, slide out your spar, you're going to be able fold the wings back just like that how cool is that like I'm, I cannot wait so so neat so neat I know everybody was like super excited to see that so was I but yeah I mean just how cool is that you're gonna be able to fold the wings right back so you go from having a 1600 millimeter bird which hard to fit in a car for sure and don't feel like taking the wings off and on and off every single time you go to the field. Well, you don't have to anymore. You just rotate them right back. Look at that. Fit in the back seat of your car probably pretty easily. So yeah, that was, I was really stoked about that when I saw that. I was like, you gotta be kidding me. That's pretty nifty. So yeah, that is the stork in the camo. Sorry, I'm just watching, watching the chat. Jackson's RC Aviation, super, super excited. We are too. I, I cannot wait to fly this. I have not flown this one yet. Um, I planned on getting the stick out today to maiden it, and we had like 20, to, uh, 20 mile an hour winds straight out of the north. Our runway is east to west, so I was like, yeah, I'm probably not going to chance it today. We'll go out and trying to get video and stuff on a super windy, uh, crossy day like today was is a challenge and I didn't want the planes to look horrible you know it just due to conditions just bouncing all around which balsa actually it has less resistance so it, it actually flies if you've ever flown a balsa plane from a foam you, you can tell the difference for sure Joe Pellegrino how you doing buddy 
so yeah, so that is the camel. I have the green opened up, so I'll go ahead and show you guys that one as well. Since we have it here. I'm sure you guys will see uh, some formation flying of these for sure, of the two different colors. Me and my buddy, my main man, Pilot Ryan. I'm sure you guys will see us flying these information at some point. So now for the green one. So this is the green. I'm, I'm digging the green. I, I do love the camo, but the old school olive drab is pretty neat, especially with the yellow band going across the tail. Oops. Control rod here, knocking out. All right. So this one, I'm not gonna get all the bits and bops out of it. Like you guys saw them, since you guys already saw them on the other one. Just gonna try to get the most easy accessible stuff. Just so you guys can kind of get an idea for it. Hangar 51, what's up, buddy? How you doing, Kenny? All right, 71 folks in here tonight. Good to see everybody. Super excited for this stuff. I can't wait to get some responses out of you guys, too, uh, on how you guys enjoy these after you get them. Cannot wait. So, yeah, this is the olive drab. Silver and yellow on the bottom, like the camo version. So the bottoms are going to be the same. Tops are different, for sure. And let's see here. Put this bad boy on, just so we can mock it up a little bit, kind of get a size for it. There it goes. Alrighty. Yeah, I cannot wait. So yeah, this one, just like the camo, has the folding wing style. So it's all nice and hinged in there. You're just gonna be able to fold it right back. I just I can't get over that. It's so cool. I love when they incorporate little cool scale things like that into these planes. So yeah, sorry, I've been like totally into this. Haven't been paying too much attention to the chat. Um do you guys have any questions on any of this stuff? I'm sure there's tons of them. And I would be more than happy to answer, or if you're just tuning in and missed. Ken Sprouse said, I like the green one much better, not a big camo fan. Yeah, it just depends. I mean, um, I actually do like the camo. I was happy that it was flat, like, or like a satin finish instead of shiny, because I don't really like a glossy finish on camo, or really too many warbirds don't really look good with it, unless they're like a... Air show circuit warbird or something like that, but yeah, I, I'm digging the green as well. It's pretty cool. Oh, that's cool. Race 22 crew said, friend of mine restored a full size stork to flying status. Such a cool airplane. That'd be really neat to see. I have actually never seen one before. Um, I think they were kind of like a reconnaissance plane back in World War II for Germany, um, if my memory serves me correctly. Ken Sprouse, that's a good question. That's a very good question. He said, uh, sorry, I gotta find it back in the chat now here real quick. Is that a two piece spar, Bobby? How does that work? I, I don't know, I'm learning with you guys here. So that's a good question. So this looks like, so there's the main spar. And it has nubs right here that go in it looks like, so. If I can get it to line up here. Oh, I see. 
I stand corrected. So yeah, it's only one spar. I see. So it's one spar, and then this kind of locks it into place. So once you remove this piece, then you're just able to fold it right back. I'm pretty sure. Where'd our manual go here? Oh, John Graham said, Bobby, they have a real flyable stork. Here in Virginia Beach, it is a cool old aircraft. Man, I bet you that is. I'd love to see one. I didn't. I honestly did not know there was any in the states, or wouldn't have thought there were. Uh, were. That's pretty neat. Brian Chambers, thanks, man. He said, "I'm happy for Bico carrying a new line of aircraft." And just wait. There's more coming. Just wait. Just wait. I am so excited for you guys, especially for the, the next one. I'm going to let uh, our buddy Pilot Ryan help me with that announcement. So, cannot wait. Just have to stay tuned. I'm just trying to see how these spars here real quick go. Okay, yeah, so in the directions here, it just shows, so you have your ma main carbon spar that runs right through the center here. And then when you slide that out, that allows you, once you get the carbon spar out off one side, that allows you to pivot. So you undo one side, slide out the spar, and then you can pivot the wings, it looks like, from the directions here. trying to see how they locked into place because I was wondering about that myself because there's like no uh, wing bolts it doesn't look like you know to bolt it in I'm sure there are on some of these models there's spots for um, for you to attach stuff but it's just covered so you want to read the directions to make sure there's no little spots that you have to cut out with your exacto knife to get access to them Yeah, you know what, that's what I was thinking too, Dennis. One wing will have to come off to fold them. That's kind of what I was thinking. Because it, it, it'd be kind of hard. I don't know. We'll have to find out. I'm sure you guys will find out next week because I plan on building both of these. <laughs> so I'll let you know how it goes. Yeah, but other than that, guys, so um, as far as kind of shifting back a little, as far as Dynam goes, um, you guys are going to start seeing a lot of upgraded uh, airplanes from them, from what I've been hearing. So a lot of V2s and stuff like that coming, uh, better power systems, electronics, all that kind of good stuff. Um, yeah, but other than that, as far as price goes on these, I'm not sure yet. Um, waiting to find out, find out from... The boss man on uh, what the suggested retail price is going to be on them. I'd imagine they're going to be right around um, like a 1200 millimeter size uh, foam plug and play airplane. Uh, I'm guessing. So um, I don't think they're going to be god awful expensive like you guys are used to. Usually, a lot of our planes as well, you're paying three or four hundred dollars for the plane and then you still have to source electronics as far as servos and ESC and motor goes and find out what's working. I know back in the day, um, RC Groups has been around for a long time, and when I was building balsa planes, I'd always hop in there, see what guys are using, because sometimes there's better recommendations and this and that and everything else. With these, you can kind of get into um, a balsa plane for a fairly inexpensive price, and everything's there. There's no guessing or mystery as to what you need. So that's why I'm super excited for these. Um, in the bigger models, they come with all Metal Gear servos, big, hefty Metal Gear servos. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm super excited. I wish I could show you it, but that will save for next week. 
And you guys, I'm sure, will see some video on some stuff by then as well. There's going to be a big week around here. Big week. Lots of stuff going on in the warehouse, or airhouse, as, as me and Ryan like to call it. Sorry, just catching up here. All right. So, Mike Bird, how you doing, buddy? Nice to see you. Uh, Lee Davidson, uh, 1.8 Albatross. I believe it's 1.8. I can actually, if you guys give me one second, I can definitely look that up for you real quick. Turbine Matt, looking forward to maiden my PT-17. Such a pretty plane. That is a really pretty plane, buddy. I, I, I love the Dynam PT-17. If that's the one you're talking about, then the Dynam, it flies really nice. Make sure to CG it. Add some nose weight if you need to. Um, it's quite a bit of weight up front already, but if you're using a big pack like uh, 3,300 or above, you should be all right. But if you're using a smaller pack, definitely make sure you check your CG on it. Uh, George Watts, yes, all the planes are coming electric. Um... If, if for some reason some of you guys do like gas and want to go gas on these, um, we, I kind of wanted to get input from the community a little bit because down the road we might be able to get these for you guys with, like, let's say the electronics bundle, um, like the servos already for you, but without the motor. So if you guys want to add gas, you guys can add gas. But for right now, all of these are going to come kind of like an electric style plug and play. Um, all your, they're, they're all going to be electric, and then all the electronics are going to be included in the box with these. Um, it's going to be similar to an ARF as far as building goes, but, um, yeah, all the electronics are included, and then some of them are pre-installed as well. This one, I do not see any pre-installed electronics, but some of the others do have pre-installed electronics. Brian Chambers, yeah, I think we can. We can get it arranged um, to, to have them come in an ARF as well. If, if that's something you guys would like, make sure you reach out to me um, because I can definitely make arrangements to probably have that happen. And it, especially with something like the Stork, um, if you guys would just want, um, let's say, the power system or the electronics and not the power system or something, just maybe shoot me an email. We might be able to work something out. Um, but as far as right now, they're all just coming – uh, balsa plug and play or or I guess uh other words you could say like ARF plus because it comes with all the electronics yeah Ken Sprouse no reason at all you couldn't do a conversion I think even in the manual um it talked a little bit about gas I thought but Yeah, nothing wrong with electric at all. I, I love electric. It's, I used to fly. That's all I ever flew was, was gas. And then I started getting into some of these foams, foamies a long time ago and going to electric. And, man, it's easy. And you don't have to clean your plane. But I do miss the smell of nitro and gas. I don't know. It, it like, always, that smell would just get, like, stuck in my car and I, or my truck. And I love it. You get in there and get a nice little smell of nitro or something. It takes you back to the field. Boss 223 said, I would rather have it all together. Yeah, me too. It's nice when everything comes in a package. It just takes all the guessing out of it. You don't have to go and buy this and this and everything else. Everything's already there for you. John Graham, what did the landing gear look like? Um, So it's like a wire landing gear, wherever they went to. Oops. So the landing gear, it looks like, come in a few different pieces here. Um, if you saw the box, here we go. I can show you this one. It's not opened yet. But if you see on the box here, it has, like, some main landing gear struts coming down and then some, like, wires coming off of it. So that's how it's set up.
Sorry, I'm trying to get everything out of the bag here. So there's some little springs and stuff in there, but other than that, yeah, here's all your landing gear components. Just some metal rods you're gonna have to stick together. These are your mains right here. Should be pretty simple. Reminds me of some of the old, um, older balsa stuff I used to do. It's, it's actually, it looks a lot harder when it's, than it is actually put these kinds of things together. Put that back there. I was curious to see what kind of tires it came with as well. Yeah, so they're like a foam tire. They're kind of squishy, not too bad, but that's what's good about a lot of these balsas is you can upgrade them. I know back in the day, um, a lot of times I never kept the tires on some of my stock planes. I'd always put Dubros on them and then put, if it's something like this, probably a wood prop looks pretty cool on it. And uh, that's probably some of the stuff you guys will see me do on this as well. Wood prop, some cool, realistic looking tires and, and landing gear on there. <laughs> That's right, Ken Sprouse. Yeah, Ken, we're, we're, we're still working on that. I'm, I'm waiting. Uh... I'm still waiting on. I don't want to tell you guys the price and then have it be something different, you know, before it gets on the site. Um, because ultimately, it's not always my decision. That's, that's definitely the boss man's decision. So I don't want to reveal price yet um, until I, I absolutely 100% sure know what it is. Um, but you guys will definitely be seeing it this week. And I'm sure once they're on the site and available and all that, I do have um, a few in stock of the stork and the stick. Um, so as soon as they're on the site, you guys will probably get, an, uh, if you guys make sure to subscribe and hit your notifications bell because I'll probably go live sometime during the day this week to kind of let you guys know, tell you about it. Um, hopefully have these built so you guys can see them built together, how the wings function, for example, because I'm super curious to see how that works, see if you have to actually take off a wing to get them to fold or, or how that actually works. Um, yeah, so just stay tuned. I'll, I'll make sure as, as soon as I find out, I'll be going live to tell you guys, whether it's Monday, Tuesday. Um, but yeah, ho hopefully, hopefully you guys will see here soon. John Graham said, can't wait to see you and Ryan fly this girl. Yeah, me too. Me too. I'm building both of them. So I'm sure you guys will get some uh, formation flights out of them. Uh, me and him will definitely rip that stick up quite a bit too. We'll go ahead and put that back up here so you guys can see it if anybody has not yet. I cannot wait to build this stuff, guys. So my little workshop I have at home when I used to build balsa, man, I would be in there until all hours of the night doing this stuff. It's such an enjoyment, you know, kick on some tunes or have a little TV in there and just kind of work away and it's an, it's an, I don't know, I get an enjoyment out of it. I like building this kind of stuff. Yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking too, uh, Dana. He said it needs a more of a flat finish basically yeah that, that one's a little bit more shiny but i do like the olive drab it, it's pretty it's pretty uh c mafia yeah so um yeah we do plan on it we don't have just dynam batteries either we we carry gen zace and tattoo packs now also and if there's something that you guys don't see on the site as far as battery recommendations go um, make sure to email me because um, we're kind of putting a feeler out there as, as to what you guys want to see as far as battery sizes go. So we do have quite a few different sizes on there, especially for our birds like uh, 6S5000, 6S3300s for like the Hawker Hunter. Um, then we have 3300 four cell packs, 3300, uh, or I'm sorry, yeah, 3300 three cell packs, 2200 three and four S packs and a few others. So there's quite a few different Gen Zace batteries on there. And then if tattoo something you want, I do know those aren't on the site yet, but um, we can get them for you, no problem, so. <laughs> Boss223 said, I have a great workshop. It's like my living room. 
with tools and a TV. That's how mine used to be too. Yep. And a nice comfy chair. Uh, good question, George. He said, what does the end of the wing look like? That's that side. And then that's the folding side right there. Yeah, I remarked she said a stick with a matching green earth stand. Yes, please. I'll show you. It's beautiful. It's like match made in heaven. Look at that. Yeah, I'm, I'm loving this plane. I've had three or four of these growing up, and I absolutely love sticks. They, everyone I've flown has flown great. Um, I, I think the last stick I flew, I was probably, oh man, 16 or 17 years old. And it was, I think it was like from Great Plains or Habaco, one of them. I can't remember. But they're always a joy to fly. And I like that it says training airplane because these actually are a very good training airplane as long as you don't have rates super dialed up. As long as you tone down the rates, maybe add a little bit of expo on them, uh, they do work well as, as a training aircraft. And then this is a good plane for someone to get that wants to go from uh, trainer to 3D or if you just want to get something that's um, for the, if you're intermediate, uh, to kind of mess around doing mild aerobatics that can do that or bump up the rates and you're doing some 3D stuff, especially with the power system. I have ran it up and it has tons of power. I'd imagine it's going to be a uh, screamer. I cannot wait. EQRC, how you doing, bud? Lee Damon said, never ever have had a stick, always have had scale planes. I bet once you buy or if you ever get any kind of stick, you'll love it, Lee. It's their good time. Yeah, you can, Air Marshal. You can, you can go nuts with a stick if you want. Uh, you can. Yeah, I remember Wild Bill said I had the You Can Do from uh, Great Plains. It was a fun time. Yeah, that was a really fun plane. I, I remember that plane. My, you know, I was talking to Ryan the other night about this. One of my favorite balsa planes from back in the day was um, the Great Plains Chaos. I, don't, I can't remember if they still make that one or not, but I absolutely love my Chaos. I had quite a few different Chaoses. One I actually scratch built, and the other was in ARF, I think, because I think they just started coming out with the ARF, um, and I got one. And I love those planes. I put Batman in the one that I built. It's kind of cool. <laughs> Sorry if I'm missing comments, guys. Yeah, George, I think you're right. You could be right about that. Ah, Rage Tech. Hey, um, comment me, or uh, I'm sorry, message me either on Facebook at Bobby Kamita or uh, message me. My email is bobby.comita at bitgohobby.com, and I'll get you taken care of, buddy. That was for rage. <laughs> Ken Sprouse. Uh, TNRC, I do not have a price range yet, but like I was telling the rest of the guys in the chat, stay tuned because this week when I find out price and as soon as they go on the website... I will be going live at some point during the day uh, just to kind of give everybody a heads up, let you know. And then hopefully by that time, I will have both of these storks built. Um, and I can kind of show you guys what um, those look like, all assembled, ready to go. And uh, kind of put that uh, wing mystery to rest because I'm curious to see how that thing folds too without having to take off one side of the wing or not. Um, these planes are super well thought out though, so I'm sure there's something slick in there that... It'll, it'll probably go pretty easily.
Joe Pellegrino said, my favorite plane was the Sig Cougar. Yeah, that was a good one, too. Yep. I had the uh, Phoenix Decathlon a while back. I love that plane. One, though, that I wish I would have never have sold, it was my Hangar 9 Fokker D7. I don't know if you guys remember that one or not. It was like, uh, it was blue, white, and red, and had some crazy design on the bottom of it. Some really goofy camouflage. It, I had a, uh, oh, what I have on that? Like a Sato 120, I think I had on that thing. Uh, I wish I would have never sold it, though. It's, it's one plane still to this day that I wish I would have never got rid of it. I've looked for them online, too. You can't find them anymore. They're hard to find. Uh, Pilot Jerry RC, Bobby, when do you expect to be able to ship out to customers? Um, hopefully within the coming week or two. This was uh, first few out of the run. Uh, and then I have a couple others over here that I'm doing some experiments with, I guess you'd like to say. Uh, but those will be available here soon as well. Um, the big one I'm looking at right now that is absolutely beautiful. Um, I just, I, you guys are going to go crazy over it. Ooin and Owen and the whole bit. Um, I can give you a little teaser without giving it away. Give me one second. Just to give you guys an idea of the next one that's coming of, and how beautiful it is uh, and how scale it is, this right here is absolutely beautiful. I'll bring it around here. These are the beautiful scale and uh, realistic gauges for the big one that's coming. That's as much as I can show you, though. <laughs> yeah, so the gauges, I, I, when I opened it and I seen the gauges, I was like, holy smokes, it's detail. I mean, it's even down to, I, it's just amazing. And all of these are nice, actual little screws. They're not imitation. I mean... It's, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. RC5. It's hard to keep secrets around here. It's so hard to keep secrets. Especially when you're looking at them. I want to show you guys so bad I can't see straight. But I just wanted to give you guys a little teaser of what's coming. Because it's super scale and it's absolutely beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah, cannot wait. <laughs> Ken Sprouse, Bobby K, we won't tell, we promise. <laughs> I'm sure. The only problem is, is I keep these public, so you guys might not tell a secret, but someone else viewing it later might. <laughs> Yes, Air Marshal, it is awesome. That is correct. Yeah, it's coming, guys. I'm as as soon as I'm able to announce the next one, I I will definitely I will do it. I wanna I wanna show you guys bad.
Michael Rajga said, can you say Balsa P61? Nah, no, it's not one of those. That'd be really big if it was, because this, this thing's big for the size. Jackson RC, RC Aviation, how many Hawkers do you have in stock? We just got a whole shipment in last week, so I have tons of Hawker Hunters back in stock now. Just got them back in stock. Would I be able to turn the Dynam P47 into a speed demon without destroying it, Dylan said. Uh, yeah, you know what? I actually took the Dynam P47 out, Ryan and I did, I think last weekend. Um, we, I did the motor upgrade with the G25, um, 60 amp ESC running four cell power in it. And I literally, I was putting it through its paces because I was curious myself. I mean, ripping full speed circles and everything. I tried to fold the wings on it and couldn't. So I would say, yeah, it, it can take it for sure. Um, if you want just a little bit more comfort, you can go ahead and glue the, the wing pockets in, but it did take it just fine. I had uh, two flights on it. One that really takes it great though. The best one out of all of them um, with that G25 so far upgrading it was the GB, the Dynam GBY. That thing is, oh, it's a sweetheart as far as flying goes and then it'll go to the moon. It, it's super fun. The only thing on that darn GB is I don't know if any of you guys have them or not. Um, or I think, oh, I do have mine over there. I'll show you real quick. Let me grab it. So the only thing on the darn GB is, I mean, I had some landings that would look beautiful. And then they ended up flipping me over, or started dog walking a little bit. These darn wheel pants, for some reason, get caught like... I don't know, they, they catch and then they'll flip you over. So I don't know for any of you guys that have this or not, you can leave it in the com or in the chat if you've came up with a solution to this, but my plan was to kind of like trim this out a little bit so it keep me from flipping over. But the plane performed phenomenally with this G25. And this one I put an 80 amp ESC and popped it up just a little bit more. Um, but it flew great. But just those darn landings are the only thing. I mean, they look beautiful, and then I ended up screwing it up right at the end. Sorry if I missed anything in the chat, guys. TNRC Cub question mark. Maybe in the future, man. Maybe. Ah, John Graham, thank you so much, man. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. We try hard, man. I, I want to see, uh, I want to bring, th bring things to you guys that um, you're going to enjoy, have a good time with, and like these bosses, for example, I thought bringing to the market uh, for us something like this was a great idea. I know a lot of you guys, um, some of you have came from balsa, and then some of you are in the foam area, but getting to the point where you want to kind of dabble in balsa, and I just thought this was a really good um kind of spot to be in to bring you guys something that took the guessing out of it as far as power systems, servos, and all that. So we kind of figured it all out for you so you don't have to. And I really hope you guys enjoy these things. I cannot wait to fly them. Can't wait to make some videos on them so you guys can see them. And I can't wait for you guys to get them in your hands to see how you enjoy them. I think you guys are all going to love them. Uh, they're not going to be your typical foam plane, you know, build it in a half hour, hour, and up in the air. Um, but they, they are definitely going to be worth the time. Lee Davidson, DR1. I wish that'd be pretty cool too, wouldn't it? I like the old World War I planes. I really do. That Fokker D7, I'm telling you, is like my favorite one. I love that plane. Dylan, you know what? That might be a good question for Air Marshal. Um, Air Marshal, Dylan asks, what is a comparable... Uh, what is a comparable spectrum motor to the G25? That I'm not too sure on, to be honest with you. I've never compared any of those. I know Dave is like bad to the bone as far as spectrum tech goes, so he might be able to answer that for you. Scatterbot, how you doing? Ah, new Dynam stick. No, 
This, this is a new brand, man. Dancing Wing at Bitco Hobby. This is balsa, man. Uh, plug and play, or I guess we're saying it's plug and play, but it comes with uh, some of the electronics pre-installed, but uh, motor, ESC, servos, everything's there for you. This is uh, all brand new, not Dynam. We did have some Dynam earlier. I had the Gloucester Media V2. Those are all in stock now, 6S power system. So that was the new Dynam we had on tonight. And then there's some, uh, there's some new V2s from what I hear, guys. Uh, I've been talking to a couple of the guys over at Dynam. There's some cool new stuff coming, especially with upgrades. Did anybody see that? Uh, oh, uh, the Beaver. We built the Beaver last week on the show. I get off the show. I was like, holy smokes, there's another one coming. It's got big, juicy tires on it, which are awesome. They're spongy. I, I have some here already as far as the tires go. I don't have the plane yet. I, you guys would be seeing it because I can't wait to see that myself. But, yeah, they did like a red and white paint job on it. It's like super tundra and bushy style now. Uh, pretty neat. has black windows, which I thought was really cool. I saw them do a poll um, the other week on that as well on to see if you guys like the clear windows or the black windows more. And I was digging the black windows, and I was glad you guys did too because it, it won the vote for sure. I saw everybody commenting saying, oh, the black windows are awesome, and I thought so too. Air Marshal, the new ME262 6S on the streets yet. Is that... Um, I have not opened what I have yet, and uh, through my manifest, I did not. They didn't say V2 on it, so I don't think they're here yet. I did ask uh, the tech team over there when they will be coming, so when I find out, I will let you guys know. Um, yeah, I, I saw that the new ME262 is going to have the 6S power, like the Gloucester Meteor, so 2200 kV in runners, and then suspension retracts. Finally, come on, about time. All right, cannot wait for that. Upgrade the F6F Hellcat. Dave Marshall upgraded his F6F Hellcat with uh, G25 and whatnot. Dana's RC. Bobby, how long do we have to wait for the big bomb? Hopefully not too much longer. I'm going to go as soon as I, like, stay tuned, guys, because as new products come, you guys are going to see me popping on here live all the time. Um, we got... We, we, we went in and invested in all of the equipment to do this, and I love doing this every Sunday night. Um, so if there's more opportunities to come and hang out with you guys and show you guys stuff during the week, I'm definitely going to be here uh, hanging out with you guys and bringing some announcements. So... Dave Martin Graff said, had my Lemon RX in the Dynam T28 flying it well with no gyro, I impressed myself. <laughs> yeah, that man, that thing actually flies phenomenal uh the dynam t28 i love that plane i actually did a custom paint job on on one um i did like the uh rust-oleum uh chrome paint it gives it a beautiful finish and uh i love that plane it flies great yeah especially without a gyro it'll fly that's one of the ones once you get dialed in it, it feels like it has a gyro because it's so smooth Ah, Tug Hill RC. Uh, I can't remember. Who was it that had that question? I think it was, oh, Dylan. Uh, Tug Hill RC had the answer for you there. He said, EFLM 16 or 12605. Oh, so the BL15 um, Outrunner motor and is the equivalent to the Tomcat G G25 motor, if you were wondering, buddy. Lee Davidson, new paint scheme for Hawker Hunter yet? I have not heard anything new on that darn paint scheme yet for the Hawker Hunter. I know it's supposed to happen, but it's just a matter of time, I think, right now. Lots of crazy things going on in the RC market right now. So um, hopefully the color scheme's being held up due to something new coming. Who knows? Who knows? So many planes, too little money, TNRC said. Man, I tell you what, that's the truth. There's always something cool out there. No matter who it's from, there's always something sweet. Especially this time of year, you know. We're getting ready to get into spring slash uh, summertime. We're going to start seeing cool stuff from everybody, and I can't wait. I love new stuff. It's just hard to pick. It's hard to pick and choose, especially when a bunch of cool stuff comes out at once. It's like, man, do I get that or that? You kind of have to put things in a row. And then that's what I do, you know. I kind of make a list. I'm like, I'm going to get this one, then this one, and this one. And then 
Next week, something new comes out, so you have to completely reorganize your order of airplanes here as to what order they went in. I, it's, it's, it's nuts. It's just being loving the hobby, I guess. There's always something new out there, and your list and order is always changing. No, oh, don't even say that word, Lee. Christmas? Get out of here with that. Jeez Louise. I don't even want to think about it. We're finally past that. We're warming up over here. I've been, I've been dying not being able to fly all the time. We're finally starting to warm up a little bit. And I think we kick back time tonight. I think that daylight saving stuff kicks in tonight. So remember that, guys. Which is good because we gain uh, an hour of light. So that's one hour more to fly at night. Dave said, now we got another Corona check on the way. It's so hard to pick what you get. Yeah, airplane stimulus check there. <laughs> Air Hammer, yes, there will be a spring sale coming. I do not know when it's going to pop off yet. Um, yeah, we're still kind of getting out of winter here, so I'd imagine it'd be, it'd be a little bit before our spring sale pops off. Oh, man, Air Marshal RC, that's not a bad idea. See, he's going to get a, instead of an airplane, an arm of felony. Those are fun, too. Those are super fun. Or you could get a Red Cat Kaiju. Those are a blast if you want to bash. Oh, yeah. Oh, time change was last night. Okay, that makes sense. Pilot Jerry RC said the weather turned to crap where he's at. Time to put some airplanes together. Yeah, that's what I do too. I, uh, you know, back when I was building Balsa, they take quite a while to build sometimes, especially if you're not down in the basement every night building the darn thing. Um, yeah, that's what I do too. You know, during the winter when it's cold and crappy out, you can't really do anything or it's like way too cold to fly or snows on the ground. Definitely get some airplanes built, especially if you have them in the boxes. Yeah, that was a good video, uh, David Martin Graff. He said, did everyone see Dave's RC fly the Dynam Meteor off the snow? He trickled his left gear and belly landed safely. Yeah, that was, a, that was a good video. Dave's RC, check him out if you guys haven't. Make sure to like and subscribe and hit the notifications bell on him as well. Um, he goes live every Friday, I believe. Um, then you got RC Air Marshal, of course. Bunch of good guys out there. Tons of different shows, all times of the night, every day. Absolutely wonderful. If there's something you guys missed, beautiful thing about YouTube, you can always go back and watch it, which is great. So, uh, yeah, stay tuned to all those guys. There's, there's a bunch of cool things coming, and a lot of those guys get some pretty cool big. So definitely stay tuned to all their channels. Yeah, George Watts. He said, Dave's RC flies in some brutal weather. Yeah, he's all the way up north. So, I mean, they probably, I, I, wanna, I think he's in Maryland, I'm pretty sure. So, they probably get hammered being up a little bit more north. Just like Lee, he's in Canada. So, he's always dealing with cold weather and snow, too. He hears us cry about it, and he's probably like, oh, yeah, deal with what I have right now. Philip Bender said, with all the snow we had on the ground this year, I finally flew, flew on skis with a few of my planes. Pretty cool. That is a really cool experience. You know what? Um, as far as ski goes, so I got skis for my, um, I had the big uh, Cessna 150. And I got skis on that thing. And I never got to really use them because I went out to fly off some snow. And it was too deep. So I could kind of like get up, you know. 
and get off the ground, but every time I'd land, as soon as she started to sink down, it was over with. So I put floats on it, and floats did great off of snow. It really didn't matter how deep it was. The, the floats were the way to go for me. But yeah, it is fun flying off snow and water. It's a good time. We made a little ramp. There's, you know, parking lots get plowed, and the school I fly out gets plowed every once in a while. Uh, the beaver that I used to have, it's actually hanging on the wall back here. The old fly zone turbo beaver. I don't know if you guys remember that one or not. Um, I had a video on my old channel of it. Uh, we made like a little ramp out of the school, out of one of the snow piles and we're like doing some pretty sweet carrier launches off of it. It's a good time. You can get creative full in, in snow with some floats. <laughs> and Sprouse said, screw the Draco, my money is going to BitGo. <laughs> One of you guys said the other night, it had me dying laughing, because uh, everybody's so excited for the Draco. I get it, so am I. Uh, but uh, he, he said, I'm going to laugh so hard if that Draco comes out and it's UMX. And I just could not help it. I thought that was pretty funny. But yeah, this stuff, though, the dancing wing stuff, oh my goodness gracious. I can't wait for you guys to see it, hold it, get it in your hands. I just couldn't believe either, like, this one is, well, with the matching earth stand, it looks beautiful, but um, I have it marked right here, the 90 millimeters back, whoops, and it is absolutely, I just can't believe that, 2200 in there, because I, I was like, man, that's kind of a small battery, I think, but look at that thing, CG. It's dead, it's right on the money, dead nuts right there. <laughs> RC Air Marshall said, Ken Sprouse, there's an awesome link to Bitco at rcairmarshall.com. <laughs> yeah, don't, and yeah, like I said, guys, if um, your favorite YouTubers out there, a lot of them do have affiliates with us. So if you guys want to get some of this stuff when it's released, make sure to go to their websites like Pilot Ryan Media's website or Dave Marshall's website and make sure to click through their links because um, that's a that supports them and their channel and um, lets them bring the quality shows and products to you guys that you guys see all the time on their channels. So make sure to support them any way you can. Um, it's real easy, couple seconds, two clicks of the button to get through and use their links um, and they appreciate it a lot, I know. So yeah, definitely make sure to click through your favorite um, influencers stuff to get through, to get your favorite products and uh, yeah, they all appreciate it. John Graham, yeah, you know what? I did see that this morning. It was like blown up all over Facebook. I was getting tagged in quite a few of those. Uh, that's cool to see. I'm glad that the myth is, or, or mystery or mythical plane is actually maybe out there. That's pretty cool. Philip Bender, yeah, same here, same here. Sorry if I missed anything in the chat, guys. I'm trying to stay here with you. Uh, Pilot Jerry RC, Bobby, do you work with Dad's RC hanger at all? He's in England. No, I do not. I'm, I'm not too familiar with him, buddy. I will have to check him out. <laughs> yeah, Dennis, me too. That's all right. Suspense is good. Suspense is good. Anyhow, yeah, so is there anything else you guys want to know about the new product line? I cannot wait to show you guys. Sorry. Just making sure I didn't miss anything. Sometimes I have it on my phone instead of here because it, uh, sometimes my phone seems faster than my laptop. So I just want to make sure, like, the chat's not screwing up where I don't see you guys at all. 
All right. Economy delays, Air Hammer RC said. Pilot Jerry RC, yeah, we'll check him out, man. I, I love seeing uh, new YouTubers channels that, that or YouTubers that have been around for a while that I don't know of either because some of them are usually pretty skilled, pretty crafted, and I love seeing some of the ideas that come out of them. Um, that's just like, you know, Pilot Ryan had RC Girl on, on the show last night, like I was saying earlier, and she is super createful. Um, if you guys saw that Gen 8 she did and the sticker layout and stuff on it, it turned out really nice. I mean, it looks like it's it's completely custom. It's it's really awesome. I like seeing other people's ideas and creativity, especially in the hobby we're in, whether it be airplanes or cars. Um, there's just some really neat stuff that you guys do to those things. I, I love it. I love seeing like the old rustic cars um, or cool paint jobs on them or the planes that are just oh just so beautifully weathered. I'm I'm not excellent at weathering, and I see some of your guys' stuff that is oh just gorgeous. So, like. Um, another really cool thing is like Papa Boozer's Papa Dotting. That is so cool. Love that too. <laughs> when is the 1929 Dynam Ford Trimotor being released? I don't know. If you find out, you tell me because I'd love to see one of those. That would be cool. They'd have to get the corrugated metal and all that perfect on them though. It, it'd have to look like corrugated metal running across the wings because that is a very unique plane. They'd have to get that right. And the way the radials hang down off of the off of the wings is pretty cool. It, it looks like that darn motor is going to fly off. At least to me, looking at it, it's like, man, how's that motor not fly off of that thing? Yeah, Pilot Jerry, that was a great show last night. Enjoyed RC Girl, he said. Yeah. Yep. She's a super great influencer, and she takes you along for the ride, guys. Like... I love it. She's a, she's super honest with all of her reviews. Um, she kind of gives you the walkthrough too, like of what she's uh, going through as far as um, she's just starting to fly RC planes. So she has the yellow T28 um, a little Corsair that I think kind of gave her some problems. That's not really a good warbird to start off with. So totally not her fault by any means. Um, that, that thing would be a handful for someone new getting into warbirds. Um, but yeah, I like how she just takes you along the process of, what's going on. She doesn't cut things out. She shows you exactly how it is and, and what's going on in her video. So definitely check her out if you guys haven't yet. It's RC Girl on YouTube. Uh, Pilot Ryan, check out his, his live stream from last night. He had her on the show. It, it was great. <laughs> George Watts. <laughs> uh. Yeah, Michael Nolan. Yeah, um, yeah, we do work with RC Girl. We sent her the the Gen 8 she did. We actually sent her. Um, so if you guys check out her video, that is from Bitco Hobby. And um, if you guys decide to get something like that, make sure to click through her link because um, she's one of our affiliates as well. And anything that you guys, if you guys click through it, it, it definitely helps out her channel um, or any of our affiliates channels. So make sure you click through your favorite um, affiliates links. Definitely. Yeah, Mike Bird, her surface upgrade videos are, are like on point. You know, her editing and just uh, like, man, it, it's, it's all on point. Her whole channel is absolutely awesome, and her website is fantastic. Um, you guys can go to her website, kind of find out stuff about her, go through links and all that kind of stuff. It's a really awesome website. Yeah, Air, Air Marshal, her Gen 8, I, that's what I just kept talking. I couldn't, I loved, I love the green Gen 8. And I just could not get over just the simple little things that she did to it, um, the stickers and decals and stuff of how cool it looked and the other little upgrades she did as well. That was a cool plane, or cool, <laughs> cool plane, cool car. <laughs> Boss223 said, I might have a truck or so, but I cannot afford... The time I put in planes into trucks, one vice is enough. I totally understand that. Uh, I personally was not a car guy 
at all. I mean, in real life, I love cars. Don't get me wrong. I, I like to build cars and all that kind of stuff. But as far as RC cars go, I was not, you know, I was like, eh, they're all right. And then uh, when we first moved in and transferred, uh, moved warehouses, the warehouse was empty for a little while before we got our first couple shipments in. And Ryan, you know, super into RC cars, uh, he left some, you know, sitting around here. So one day I come in here and there they are. And I'm, you know, kind of looking at them I'm like, man, all right, I'll try one of his out real quick. So I had the, the Arma Sentin, the older version, not the new one, uh, or it was Ryan's Arma Sentin. And, you know, I started driving that thing around here and drifting it and took it out back and jumped it off this hill that we have. There's a cool parking lot um, out behind our warehouse. Um, it, there's, there's a cement hill that goes up to it and it goes real flat. And you can jump it and get some crazy air. I started doing that and I was hooked. I could not stop driving the darn thing. So me and Ryan have been driving cars together now. We just have a blast, man. He's, yeah, he's, oh, we have a great time together. It's a good time. Yeah, Dana's RC. Yeah, she's a marine biologist, RC girl. Yeah, very smart. Yeah, Mike Bird, it, he said, I'm frightened to get into crawling and can't afford another addiction. You know, um, like I said, I was just getting into cars, and uh, I thought crawlers would be boring, and then I got one and was like, holy cow, I can't believe how fun this is. It's actually kind of challenging, and then the upgrades you can do to these things, it's, it's mind-blowing. You could upgrade, like, one of these Gen 8s, take it outside and do photography work to where you would think that was a real older international. It is, it's just amazing some of the stuff you can do to these. I mean, they have anything from fake little gas cans to fire extinguishers to axes. I mean, you can get fully functional wenches on the front of them. I mean, it's, it's awesome, man. So yeah, it's 1045. Is there anything else you guys uh, want to know or see or hear or anything I can answer for you? Probably go about another 15 minutes or so and then we'll call it a night. I have a lot of building to do as you guys can see. So it's probably going to take some time to get these together. And uh, yeah, I'm hoping the weather is going to be nicer at some point this week so we can get out and fly some more. <laughs> Air Marshal. <laughs> uh, Ken Sprouse, I wish I could. I just, I don't know if I can. I don't know if I can. I thought the manual said eight minutes on the stick. Let me let me see real quick. He, he asked, uh, what was the flight time? Race, Race 22 crew said, estimated flight time on the stick with 2,200 packs. I thought it was eight minutes, but let me, let me find the darn manual. I had it right around here somewhere because I was just building it yet last night. Yeah, so estimated flight on the stick is um, 8 to 10 minutes flight time on 2200 to 2800. That's what the manual says. So 22 to 2800 milliamp battery, 4 cell power, you're looking at um, 8 to 10 minutes. And I'm, I'm sure that's not beating it up the whole time, I'd imagine. I'm not sure. <laughs> Kenny said, been lurking for an hour, just got home from the field. What's up, Kenny? 
Glad you just got home from the field, Lucky. Man, I wish I could have been out there today. It was just way too windy. And that north wind at our field is treacherous. Oh, it's, it's horrible. I fought that Dynama Grand Cruiser, uh, the one, the video I put out last week. I flew that in stupid crosswind out at our field, and it was just not fun. Not fun. <laughs> Man, <what's this? laughs> Dan's RC. Ken, are you going on tonight? <laughs> oh, geez. You guys are funny. Great group of guys in here. So, yeah, we are coming up on 11 o'clock, guys. I don't know how late you guys want to go, but, uh, yeah, I cannot wait to get into this thing and fly it, man. It's going to be awesome. I think a lot of you guys are probably going to be ordering the matching stands with these when you get them, too. I'm about to push this plane off the end here. Ah, thanks, Hamilton's Hanger. Appreciate it, man. Yeah, if there's anything you guys ever want to see or questions or anything like that, um, either ask in the comments or tell me if there's anything you guys want to see in the show for the next week. Um... Yeah, this is all for you guys. I love doing it. Love hanging out with you guys. This is such a great time. There were 71 folks in here just a second ago. 70 folks now. And, uh, yeah, I appreciate you guys all coming to hang out with me, build some stuff, see some cool new stuff. And, like I said, stay tuned to the channel during the week because there's going to be some other cool stuff coming. Um, there's another really big announcement that is going to be coming as well um, that me and my buddy – Pilot Ryan are going to be bringing to you guys as far as that announcement goes. Um, can't I can't wait. I cannot wait. Big things going on around here at Bitco Hobby. Uh, I can't wait to see a lot of you guys at the show, too. I hope a bunch of you guys are coming down to the fly-in in Florida. I know for some of you West Coasters and Far East Coasters, um, it's going to be hard for you to get down there unless you fly. It's about a 17-hour drive, a little over 17 hours for me and Ryan to get down there, but I cannot wait. Cannot wait. Figured we better go since it's the name Pilot Ryan Media Flying, huh? <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I just, I can't wait. I'm so excited for that event. And then uh, late August we'll be at Nephi. So that's something me and Ryan are trying to put together right now. And uh, hopefully Bitco Hobby and AMA will be sponsoring that um, if all goes accordingly. So that's going to be at the AMA grounds in Muncie um, at the end of August. I can't remember the dates off the top of my head. So be ready for that one. Um, you will see me, I don't know if Ryan's going to it or not, but you will see me at Jet Jam this year down in, uh, Rosewood RC. I can't remember the exact name of the town it's in. I think it's Elizabeth, Indiana is the town. Um, but yeah, you'll see me at Jet Jam this year. Um, and there'll be more shows too. There's, there's more that I just can't think of off the top of my head. I think, um, uh, Jet's over louisville or jets over kentucky something like that we'll be attending that one there's a long list of them i just can't remember all of them right now off the top of my head but i hope i get to see you guys there meet a bunch of you guys in person i love seeing you guys in the chat and talking with you and sharing our experiences together and yeah i just can't wait to well i guess you can't shake hands anymore but do a little fist or elbow bump and uh meet you guys in person Dennis Farley said, I'm shocked you're getting Ryan to go, Bob. Me too, you know. I, I might have to handcuff him and throw him in the trailer to get him to come to his own event, uh, but we'll get him down there. No, I'm just kidding. He is super stoked. He is so, so excited. That's all, that's all he's been talking about lately. I'm telling you guys, he's excited to meet you guys as well and go to the event and do some flying. That's what we're here for. Um, I cannot wait to go down there and fly with some of you guys. Uh, it's it's going to be awesome. We're going to be able to share some great experiences together and make some great memories, and I just cannot wait. Wrecking Roy's RC, how you doing, buddy? Yeah, George Watts, uh, Jet Over K, uh, 
Jets over Kentucky is a turbine event primarily. Yes. Yes, it is. I think they do allow the bigger, um, like, HSD, EDF stuff as well. I can't remember. Yeah, Kenny, that's just you. So my screen is flickering. Is that just me? At least I think so. I don't, I don't see it on my side. Uh, so, yeah. How was sound tonight, guys? I think I got the audio problem kind of figured out finally. Well, besides for the beginning of the video where I was standing here looking like a mime because I was talking and forgot to turn the sound on. But, uh. <laughs> Barry Campbell said the Hangar 51 caps lock, lock is stuck. No, Kenny's just always screaming at you, I found out. Whenever, whenever he's in the chat, no matter whose it is, he's just yelling at you. He wants to get the point across. <laughs> Uh, Paul McGill, Bobby K, does the stork have a, a pilot or cockpit seats? Yeah, it does, buddy. I thought I showed him. Sorry if I did not. So, the the stork comes with, it does not come with a pilot, so that's going to be up to you to pick. Um, we do have pilots on the website, um, but I'm sure something like this, you guys might want to put something a little more scale in it. Um, but So, it comes with a nice little seat um, for your pilot, and it comes with... Uh, the scale tail gun, which is really nice. And then it also comes with the um, antenna that goes on the wing. It's, it's kind of mounted underneath the wing. It was the, it's like the scale antenna for it as well. Mary Boozer RC, how you doing, buddy? Said so Bitco Hobby flew the PT-17 today. Absolutely fantastic. Awesome, man. I'm so glad you enjoyed it. I love that plane myself. I was just uh, saying to someone else in here, um, they were asking about it. I said, just make sure CG is good on it and it flies great. Uh, 3,300 or more up front, you're good to go. Dave's RC, what's up, man? How you doing, buddy? <laughs> Wreck <-a -merle. laughs> Oh, man. You fly anything else today, Boozer? You're probably out there flying with Kenny, weren't you? You lucky dogs, man. I wish I was down there, 12 inches of sun, as you would say. So Dave, Kenny, I don't know if you guys were in here earlier, but we have some new stuff, man. Balsa plug-and-play style from Dancing Wing Hobbies at Bitco Hobby now. And then we have the Stork in oop, if I can get it, two different color schemes. Absolutely beautiful. And uh, another big, beautiful plane I'm looking at right now that I wish I could share with you guys so bad. I just can't yet. Uh, stay tuned this week. Just stay tuned. I don't mean to leave you hanging, but just stay tuned. I promise you guys will see it. Dana's RC, can we see all the new stuff? I wish. I wish. Just not yet. It's coming. It's coming, I promise. And it's coming. Madam, Florida flying was great today. Yeah, thanks for rubbing it in, buddy. <laughs> I bet you it was. Oh, man. My sister's actually down in Jacksonville, and she's always rubbing it in, too, especially when it's cold up here. Oh, well, it's 75 degrees down here. I have the kids at the beach. I'm like, oh, boy. I'm like, must be nice. Must be nice. All right. Uh, Mary Boozer... It, they call the stork plug and play and the stick. They're not really plug and play. They're more of like an ARF plus. Um, it comes with all the electronics, motor, ESC, servos, all that. So it takes all the guessing out of it. But it is still kind of an ARF style plane. So there is some building involved. Uh, same with the stick. This stick actually is super easy to put together. If you um, 
usually me, I'll get like a Pepsi to the side of me, my glue and my tools lined up, and I just kind of go. I get zoned in. And if you're, if you're one of those builders that will just, you know, go until the build's finished, this will probably take you about an hour, hour and a half to build. Um, fully assembled, everything installed, so not too bad. The Stork, I'm guessing that's going to take a little bit longer because that has a little bit more parts to it. And that one I noticed, you actually have to put the, um, the, the hinges in. So that with the other ones that are going to be available already have all that installed for you. But that, that's the only one I noticed, but not a deal breaker by any means. <laughs> Mary Boozer need one just I know and they the, both colors are actually really beautiful I can't wait I'm gonna build both of them me and Ryan are gonna, uh, I can't even talk I'm so excited me and Ryan are going to get some formation flights in them on them for sure so yeah you'll be seeing them on our channel first and then uh, Ryan's channel as well so stay tuned because you'll be seeing on both of those channels as soon as we uh, get the video done Awesome, Dustin Gable. He said, Bicko Hobby picking up the T28 with the 6C radio this Wednesday off Bicko. It's already in the cart. Can't wait. Awesome, man. Uh, make sure to leave uh, something in the comments um, when, you, when you order it um, so I see it. All right, I'd love to add a little note in there, something for you. Uh, yeah, just so I know it's you. Yeah, Ken Sprouse. Stork folding wings. Yep. Yeah, so the Stork has... The folding wings, which is super neat. Oops, let me slide some of this stuff off here so I don't lose it. Yeah, so Dave, Kenny, or anybody that's just tuning in that missed it, I'm trying to test fit it here. Yeah, so this goes like that. Oops. And then. The wings, I gotta figure it out, but they fold back for transport, just like the real deal. It's pretty, oops, it's pretty sweet. Yeah, I can't wait. You guys will be seeing videos and um, all of the cool things that uh, come with these here very soon in some of the videos. See you, boss two two three. Thanks for joining in, buddy. Really appreciate it. JS Bobby K, will your California warehouse be getting any of these balsa kits soon? Um, as far as I know of, no. I think it's going to be my warehouse is the headquarters. So actually, a lot of our product does come here. Um, I will I will check and see though because sometimes things get sent to the la warehouse that sometimes i'm not informed about unless i get on there and i check our inventory um but the boss man knows so if if they are i will definitely let you guys know that they are in both locations uh when they go on sale <laughs> mary boozy said yeah i need that in my life yeah me too i can't wait man <laughs> JS thought I might get a sneak peek. <laughs> the one I can I honestly I just can't wait to show you guys this other one that I the one I showed you guys the gauges on earlier. It's legit. Too legit to quit. <laughs> Dana's RC, when it comes to balsa, I'm sure you could probably do about whatever you wanted. It's pretty close design features though. Long wing. Uh, Dustin Gable. Uh, yes, we are in South Bend, Indiana. So not too far from you if you're uh, right by St. Louis there. Um, if I had to guess, usually our shipping, last week's shipping took, unfortunately, a little bit slower. But that was just due to, be, to, to getting a huge container in. So it was all hands on deck to get everything put away inventory and all that and very little time to do it and keep up with the website and orders and all that kind of good stuff um but usually on any other given day your order will go out most likely the same day or the next morning and you'll get it a day or two after if you're that close um i know there's some other competitors um that i used to shop through back in the day that are close to us and 
we use FedEx and usually when it's that close if you order by about two or three o'clock in the day usually usually about two o'clock that order will still go out in the same day and you'll get it the next day being that close but with FedEx and US Postal Service and all that stuff they are not very reliable lately so don't take my word on that because sometimes they can drop the ball it's happened quite a bit lately unfortunately especially around the holidays holy smokes what a headache When is the boss going to be on the show, Lee Davidson said. I don't know yet, buddy. I'll have to figure that one out. I'm sure here in a few shows, maybe we can get him on here. He is a great guy. You guys will like him a lot. Been flying for a long time, too. George Watts said, is it a World War I plane, Bobby? Um, go up one more war, George. <laughs> That's all I can say. <laughs> Discover RC, how you doing, buddy? Said, how does the P-61 fly? Very cool plane. The P-61 actually flies great. Um, the only, my only con to the P-61 is some of the build can be finicky. Uh, that, other than that, it is a great flying plane. Um, the build being finicky, though, it totally rewards you once you fly the thing. I mean, it is, it's awesome. And really, there's, the, the build's not too bad, it's just, Little things you have to model here and there. Um, that's the best way of putting it. Other than that, it, it's fantastic. And I have the green. I did a little bit of a custom job on the green one. It's, I have black and green, but uh, me and Ryan did a formation flight. But I like the green a little bit more, and it's kind of, I put a little bit of white um, markings on it as well. It's a little bit easier to see than the black as far as orientation goes. Black planes tend to be a little bit harder to see. When is Diane going to put out their own version of the Raptor? I don't know. That's a good question, Dave's RC. When I find out, I'll let you guys know, though, for sure. Dustin Gable, anything, buddy. Just, hey, this is Dustin, and or, or anything. Just whatever you want, just so I know it's you. Uh, I have a lot of orders go through, so when I'm processing them, sometimes I don't always catch the name, but if they're in the comments, I, I usually see the comments as soon as it uh, prints. So that way I can make sure I just know it's you. And uh, Yeah. Yeah, that goes for all you guys. If you guys ever purchase anything from us, uh, I usually see all the orders that are processed. So make sure to leave a little note or something in the comment. And uh, yeah, I enjoy seeing that kind of stuff, guys. I know a few of you guys already do. And uh, yeah, it's great. I just like knowing, uh, yeah, it's, it's awesome. Pilot Jerry, thank you for tuning in, man. Good night, buddy. Yeah, Dave's RC. Uh, yeah, Discover RC. Check out Dave's RC. He has some, some good flight videos of P61. It flies really well. Yeah, Discover RC. Yeah, the 110, it's a good flyer, but yeah, a little finicky here and there on that one. Those are really um, two of the... Not many of them are like that. Like uh, T28s go together well. Most of all of the Dynam plates go together pretty well. Um, just some of them can be finicky in areas here and there, and the P61 is, is unfortunately one of them. But um, once you get it dialed in, and the VF110, that little tail, the rudder, the way the rudder's set up um, in that rear elevator is kind of finicky on that one. And that's the only, other than that, it's a great flying bird. I was so nervous because there's not much room in that VF110 for uh, battery. And I was like, man, a 2200 just does not seem enough all the way up front in this thing. But it, mine flew really well on it. I was, I was shocked. Oh, you guys want to see the gauges on the new one for the T's, huh? Tug Hill RC uh, on on uh, 
what aircraft? What are you are you talking about? Like on the bosses or on like some of the Dynam stuff? Um, I you usually when orders are coming through, I don't really have time to uh, like open up the box and go through every single part or anything like that. But um, leave, leave something like that in the comments, and if it's something I see, I can I can try to help you out in, in that regards. Um, or if you ever get anything that's damaged or not working, make sure to contact me. I will definitely take care of you, um, with, without a doubt. Scottopot, did I just see a large albatross biplane? Uh, there could be one of those coming in the future, too. Actually, yes, there is. <laughs> uh, that is coming. The albatross I can tell you guys about. There is an albatross coming. Uh, it's, uh, I, I want to say it's 1,700 millimeter wing. Let me look. I just had it pulled up so I could tell you guys about it, and then I, uh, there it is. Okay, so the Albertross is a 1.8, uh, so it's an 1800 millimeter wing, um, and it is, it's gorgeous. It's, it's you know, like kind of like the traditional Albertross colors, um, red and yellow. It's got a black and white straight uh, striped uh, elevator. It's, it's gorgeous. I, I should have one here soon for you guys, and when I do, you guys will be seeing it. And uh, Paul McNeil, thanks, man. I appreciate that. Thanks. Yeah, I'm glad you guys like the new show. Awesome. Glad you guys like it. Wreckham Roy, no, not 1,700 millimeter, 1,800 millimeter wing on that Albatross, man. It's going to be awesome. That's a big girl. The, uh, the other one that I'm looking at right now is big as well. It's... It's not 1800 millimeters, but it's, it's big. It's close. Yes, Dana. Yeah. Al like a World War I albatross. Yeah. Like uh, Dynam has an albatross. So if balsa, the big balsa albatross is too much for you, you can always, boom, get the Dynam albatross. That one flies really good as well. But yeah, that new albatross is huge. We don't have them yet. I think they'll be on the way pretty soon. So you guys know how that goes. Shipments can take quite a while. So it might be a little bit yet before you guys see them. Uh, hopefully, though, sooner than later. Uh, yeah, 1800 millimeter biplane it is nice size uh, plane, George. And for some reason, whenever you have a biplane that that is like anywhere from 16 to 2,000 millimeters. That thing, that's a huge biplane. I mean, it's, they're big. Yeah. Biplanes always look bigger for some reason than like your 80 inch giant scale warbird. I, I don't know why. I guess it's just two wings, I suppose, but. Oh, sorry, I just seen Raphael. Sorry, I just saw that you asked something, buddy. I'm sorry. Bobby K, can you give tutorials how to adjust recovery? Yeah, yeah, I can probably do something like that for you. Sorry, guys, sometimes the chats go fast and I miss, miss you. If there's anything that I miss, just make sure to uh, repeat it. Just put like a little emoji or something by it, and I'll, I'll make sure to get to you. Sorry if I missed you. Mike Finn 18, what's up, buddy? How are you? Mike Finn 18, are you, you're, I'm guessing by the emojis, you're Firefox. Welcome, man. Good to see you in here. Paul McNeil, Bobby K, cool t shirt. Is that from Bitco? No, it's not. Actually, um, this is from. I don't know if you can see it. Kind of small writing. Uh, this is from the Kalamazoo Air Zoo up in Michigan. It's about an hour away from me, so um, we frequent uh, frequently go there quite a bit. Um, and every time I'm in there, they always have cool new shirts, so I always get one. And, uh, yeah, so that's where this one's from. Dennis Farley. Yeah, it is getting late. Sorry, man. Thanks so much for joining on a Sunday night. Uh, really appreciate it. 
Had a ton of folks in here tonight. It was it was a great show. We'll probably actually be wrapping it up pretty quick here. I was going to try to wrap it up at 11, but then we just started having more fun. So I can never seem to leave. We always get talking, get going on stuff, and it's, a, it's always a good time. So. Dennis, you're in Texas. Get out and fly for me tomorrow, buddy. <laughs> Brecker Roy said, I got to see an 1800 millimeter bike lane. You will, man. It's coming. It's coming. All right. So, yeah, guys, any uh, last minute questions or anything like that before we get off for tonight? Thank you so much for joining in. I cannot wait to fly this thing. I cannot wait. Ah, oh, it's driving me crazy. I was praying last night that the wind would die down. I knew it wouldn't, but I was hoping for the best. Oop. Try and get it up on its nose here so you guys can see a little bit better. All right. Ah, Dennis said three mile power when it's not flying. Ah, sorry about that, man. Well, hopefully they'll die down. It's bad here, too. Air Hammer RC, 1800 millimeter? Really? I hope. You don't have to hope, man. It's coming. I promise. It's, it's coming. It's a big 1800. Brian Brissett, how you doing, buddy? Nice to see you in here. Dustin Gable, got any deals on plane stands? Um, I don't think the Ernst stands are on sale right now. Uh, but yeah, we do have the Ernst stands in a different, a whole ton of array of colors. We have orange, red, neon, green, and then the traditional blue. And then we also have the big mega stand that comes in red. Um, I don't think there's any sales going on those right now, though. TNRC pilot. Bobby, is the GB red or orange? It's red, buddy. It is red. Yeah. Yeah, no. Yeah, Vico Hobby for the building. No building really on here tonight. Um, I did. It did cross my mind. Trust me. I thought about trying to put that alb or the uh, stork together a little bit. Uh, but... I just know those can be kind of time-consuming builds, so I didn't want to have you guys sit here through all of that. Because <laughs> that one would probably take a few hours to get it all buttoned up, put together. There's quite a bit there. This thing, though, is, is really, really simple to put together. Does it look orange on the screen, TNRC? Yeah, it might a little bit. It's, it's, it's red. It's a beautiful, deep red color. All right, guys, it is 11.16. I think we're going to call it a night. It's been a great two-hour tour. <laughs> uh, there's going to be new stuff coming all along throughout the week, I'm hoping. Uh, so stick around for any announcements or anything like that, flight videos from us. Uh, there's some other things in the works. And, uh, yeah. Don't forget to check out all your favorite YouTubers. Make sure to use all of their affiliate links. They do appreciate it as far as clicking through and using them because it benefits their channel and helps them bring great content for you guys. Um, yeah, stay tuned. And I cannot wait, guys. Lots more coming. I'm excited for you guys. I'm excited for spring. Uh, don't forget to check out all your local shows too. And uh, Hopefully we get to see some of you guys uh, out at the field this summer, spring, and at the Pilot Ryan Media Flying. So without further ado, thank you everybody so much for joining in on a Sunday night. Uh, sometimes it gets late in here, and but we just have a great time. So next week I'm going to try to figure out something that we can all build together or, um, yeah, maybe program or something. I don't know. We'll figure it out, but I want to build something really bad. I wanted to build something tonight, but... There's just too much cool balsa stuff and the new Gloucester and 
a uh, lot to talk about, so I didn't want to get too in depth with a build. But next week we will we we'll, uh, can't even talk. We will be building some more. Um, and yeah, thank you so much for joining in, guys. Have a great rest of your rest of your weekend. A great week. Don't forget to get out and fly. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching, and we will see you guys next week. Peace.